Hello and welcome to the Devon Football Show. As you can see, things are a little bit different, apart from the rain of course. Over the course of this season, we're going to be bringing you interviews from players, managers and club officials to celebrate what really is non-league football. This is episode one, and there's only one way we can start it. I'm Kev Hill, this is the Devon Football Show. Coming up on the show, we're at a socially distanced Southern Road chatting to Ecmo Town Manager Kev Hill. We look back on the month of September across the region and give our result of the month. We end the show at a wet and windy Hay Road where we meet Elberton Villa boss Kev Bowden. Did you know that Exmouth Town have not lost a home game here for almost two years? It's not a bad record to keep up. Let's see if they can continue it this season. Did you know that during lockdown, Exmouth Town acquired some turnstiles underneath our tarpaulin there? They've got a pretty cool story because they've come all the way from Anfield. That's right, the home of Liverpool Football Club. From one home of football to the other. So we are sat in the clubhouse at Southern Road in Exmouth Town. Obviously, Kev Hill is here with me to answer a few questions about Exmouth Town and the Western League. So to start off, Kev, what do you think of the Western League? That's a tough league, great league, to be fair. Um, every team needs to show the start of the season. Everyone seems to be beating everyone. So, yeah, it's good. What were your objectives at the start of this season? The objectives for us, obviously, with the COVID situation, like I said before, Realistic survival of the club. Like, we've just come into this league, so it's getting to know it. Realistically, sit in it, and if we can go again in a couple of years, Exmouth have never been in the Southern League, as I said before, but we want to get the balance right and everything right. Yes, have a season like we did last year, or whatever, if we can get into the top six and be something like that strong. Brilliantly, I said, I said we started really well, which is pleased me. Obviously, the start I had, I was a little bit worried, but yeah, objective. As long as I can get to where we were last year, top six will be fine. Great result this weekend against Bradford, a 6-1 win. Was the scoreline as fair as it suggested? To be fair, yeah. First time I played Bradford this year, and you don't know what you're going into. I haven't gone a goal down, and we didn't start brightly, and we struggled a bit lately getting out of the blocks. But once the equalised and the second one went straight in after, it only ever looked like one winner. I know they, I know they've uh, a few's gone from them from last year and things like that, but the lads are what we're all about. We've done really well, professional away from home and any result away from home is great and come away 6-1 at a team like that who's potentially in the top three last year and have been strong and they'll be up and around there this year again. So that's ah, a fantastic result. So just one defeat so far. Title challenges? What, part way? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That. Of course we, people talk about us to be up there. Yeah we'll tick along nicely. Obviously I've, I've always said before Tavistock will be up there. Partway would be up there, and some of the Bristol sides now, they're all, everyone's improved. Like even Cabri, if I know they've had a couple of losses lately, but sign an abundance of Mangotsville players, Southern League players, Roman Glass, striker from Southern League. It's, you hear it all, but yeah, what we do, we're hard to beat at home, and I've said that time and time again. So if we can pick up some results on the way from home and just keep our home form solid, yeah, we, we'd be in the, like I said, top six, whether we're title contenders. We'll see come April. What's your favourite moment on this pitch? Favourite moment as a manager, I would go back to say was uh, Yate last year in the FA Cup replay. Bring them down here, I think we had about 650 odd here, whatever it was. And we turned them over 2 0, and obviously they beat Taunton and Tiverton 4 0 both times a couple weeks before. But it's a great scout for us, and that's a great night, and them things. You just remember, but that's brilliant. Kev, a lot of people talk about the surface here at Southern Road and how hard it is to play here. I mean, look at a day like today, it's hammering down with rain and the pitch might cut up quite a bit. Yeah, it tends to cut, like I say, we're right by the estuary. Where, where are we, we've struggled for years and actually over the years, we haven't had a proper ground. Thing. John Tibbs has done a great job and they come and roll it, but it's down to money and investment. We haven't really invested in the pitch for years. Obviously, drainage, we're going to start, start doing it, but yes. It's a lot better now than what it used to be. But I think generally gets in people's mind when they come here before they even play. It's like we've gone on a couple of surfaces. And I remember Bridgewater at the end of last year, and that was bare and things like that. But I think it gets in people's head before they come in. We, we play on it a little bit. So 
And if I know, especially if a team comes here and they, they're a good passing team, I'm, I'm going to make it better for myself. I'm going to leave it long. Yeah? I'm going to cut it up. <laughs> it's what it is now. But it's, it's horses for courses, isn't it? Right, someone, we're strong at home. We, we're used to playing on it, so we're not in our heads before we start. Some people come here, you can see some teams are beat, they're looking at, oh, they're used to pretty pictures, but they've got to get over that. That's what it is. Still under the radar? Definitely. <laughs> How long do you think you'll keep that up for? So, uh, I'll keep it as long as we're going. Just play it there. Nah, obviously, like yourself, when people look at it, we start the season, and I'm not, I'm not silly, people are, say what they're... To me, and I'll be honest, truth, I know what my team's capable of, and I'll be honest, Yes, I think we're punching by what we've done excellent at the moment. Two tough games come up, potentially in the league. Obviously part way at home and Tavi away. But if, if we get anything out of them games, the season we've had to start, we'd have played Tavi twice out of the way, part way twice out of the way, Bridgewater away, Bradford away, Street away or up there. I said, we'd have looked at it and we could assess it again after that, but we'll see it one game at a time. Do you think that the the ground and the club are a big thing for the town as well? Definitely. You can set example for last week. I said, we get, we get decent crowds, we get people want to come and watch, people talk about it. And obviously the higher you go, in the same environment, the higher you go, the more people talk. And it may, the main aim is to get the ground looking nice, to get it ready. So if ever we were in a position to go Southern League, if it's three, five years time, like I said to you the other week, like Will and Dunn, sat in the league, and we're ready. Exmouth have never done that, never been in some league. So they want to go there, see what it's like. But we do it when we're ready. Right, we ain't going to go up to come back down and crash. Like all things do, so, yeah. But in first of all, improvements around the ground. It's nice for fans to come here and think, ah, this looks nice. For you, just a personal question. How much do you enjoy being a non-league manager? Me? I love it, to be, to be fair. I've enjoyed it. And as I said, I go over that. I go over the top sometimes. Like I'm down here today, and I'm doing stuff in the dressing room, ready for Wednesday, and stuff like this. I like everything, little attention to detail. But that's my own personal bit. It keeps me involved in football. I'm still active as a player, even though I haven't played for a year and a bit. I still train. I still want to play. I still want to be involved. Yes, I miss playing football, but I found something else I really enjoy. And the thing is, it's the buzz, buzz for the lads. And I'm all for the social side after. I love that camaraderie. And it's what I'm satisfied. I work hard, nine to five on a Monday, not on Monday. I said, weekends is my football day and I love it and I keep that going. And there's nowhere getting more enjoyment than seeing you come in the bar after seeing the fans winning, everything. even when we're not doing so well, it's just nice and they're buzzing, it's a nice atmosphere. And I, I love that buzz. Next game, midweek against Parkway. How are you feeling about that one? Yeah, it's doing really, doing really well. I, to us, it's a free hit. I said, Parkway have made no bones, they obviously want to go up. Which, it was an understatement of the signings they made, as I said before. They are a great side. To us, we know we're quite strong at home. So, yes, they'll be favourites. But as I said again, for me, I quite look forward to it because it's a free hit. If they turn us over, they could come and quite easily beat us 5 6. Yet, on the day, we could quite easily beat them up here. So, as long as it keeps raining, the mower's broke, all right, we'll be fine. <laughs> So now it's time for the crossbar challenge, the Devon football show against the manager. The rules are simple, three chances from the edge of the box. Nervous? Never. So over 400 appearances for Torquay, how are you going to feel if I beat you? You ain't going to beat me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> if he does that, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's up first then, your pick? I'll tell you what. Challenges first. Yeah. Is that me then, is it? Yeah. Right, okay. Number one. I'm nervous now. Whoa, okay. Oh, he was fucking oh, away! Twitching a little bit, he was fucking away! Oh, you hit it too hard, didn't you? <gasps> oh no! He it. No, he it. Come no, on! No, it didn't! Come no. on! No, it didn't! It didn't! 
I can. You saw that. And it's on camera. Did it clip it? No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. This is where I wanted it. Oh! <laughs> Did it hit? No. Mine clipped sure? though. Mine definitely clipped. So we're still not sure if I've hit the bar or not. So to decide who wins, we're going to do sudden death. We're going to do our weak foot and it's closest to the bar wins. Who's mugs, first? Mugs away. Okay, mugs away. I'll see how it is. Oh, oh no! No, no, no! no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> it just hit the bar and mugs away. <laughs> hey! We'll take that out, we'll just go back to the original <laughs> draw, <control, laughs> alright? Oh, he's done it as well! Oh! Oh. Lovely, well thank you, Kev. Definitely winning now, and I'm on sudden death off that left foot. Anyway, that does conclude our time here at Exmouth Town. Thank you very much to the club and Kev Hill for their time. Now we're going to go back into the clubhouse and see how the rest of our Devon teams have got on this month. Now for the roundup for our Devon clubs. In the Southwest Peninsula East, Millbrook and Ilfracombe are the only two unbeaten sides at the top of the table. We also want to send our best to Stoke Gabriel, who I know are having a torrid time at the minute. We wish you the best going forwards, and we hope, as we did see your plea for players, that you get some more experience in your side. As for the Western League, Parkway ended September. as the only unbeaten side in the league. With a fresh squad, it looks like they're already title challengers. Exmouth sit third, Buckland sit fourth and Tavistock sit eighth. It's great to see at the end of the month that all of our Devon sides are in the top ten. In the Southern Leagues, all three of our Division 1 sides drew this weekend, with Barnstable picking up their first league points of the season. Biddeford drew 2-2 with Slimbridge after going 2-0 down and both of their goals were scored by new signing Adam Carter. As for Willand, they drew 0-0 with a high-flying team from last season in Thatcham Town. And to finish off, of course, with Tiverton. They lost in the FA Cup this weekend against Taunton in that little bit of a rivalry they've got going on. But as for the league, they're three games unbeaten going into a midweek game with Yate. And that concludes our roundup for September. Our standout result of the month is for Elberton Villa, who managed to beat Saltash United in the FA Vars on penalties. And as for Elberton Villa, that's where we're off to next. It's Hay Road to talk to their manager, Kev Bowden. So we're sat in the changing rooms here at Hay Road with the Elberton manager, Kev Bowden. Kev, first question for you. You took over at the start of last season. How much potential do you think this club have? There's massive amounts of potential here. You just have to walk around the place, the, the grounds, the area. The, all it needs is a little bit of TLC and a little cash injection and this place could go all the way. Um, it could be right up there with Parkway and possibly even better with the right investment to it. There's, there's that much potential here. Let's talk about the win this weekend against Stoke Gabriel, a 9-1 yeah. victory. How yeah. was that? I mean, it was nice to get a win. Um, I'm slightly disappointed by the scoreline, to be honest. It was disappointing to concede. Um, and to be honest, it should have been double the, double the nine. We missed a lot of chances. We resorted to shooting from 30, 40 yards, trying to score the perfect goal. Um, but fair play to them. They, they stuck at it to the end. They tried to play football. Uh, and they've got to take massive amounts of credit for getting a team out every week. They brought down 20, 25, 30 spectators that got right behind their lads. So fair play to them. It can't be easy for them. So we're now pitch side at Hay Road. As you can see, I've been lent a jacket to brave the storm in this awful Devon weather. We're going to have to get used to that for the rest, se the rest of the season. Anyway, Kev, let's talk about that tweet from the Vaz yeah. game of Salt Ash. Just a bit of fun? Yeah, just a bit of fun, just a bit of banter between the three clubs. Um, I've got a few friends at Salt Ash and a few friends at Parkway, so it was just a little jovial dig make light of the situation. So in your squad you've got a few young players, yeah. is youth always something you've tried to have as a manager? Yeah definitely, we always look to promote through, throughout, the, throughout the club from, from the 18s off into the, into the first team and we've done it su successfully with a, with a few lads already. Do you think that using those young players over the next few seasons, if you can keep hold of them, that you've got a chance to get promoted? Yeah definitely, we, 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 the club has always had successful under 18s teams. Um, which is obviously good for the, for the development of the players into the first team um, and, and hopefully they will help take us to the next level, yeah. So Kev, we're now sat in the home dugout here where you yeah. probably spend most of your time as a manager. Yeah. For you, what kind of manager are you? 
I like, I'd like to say I'm, a, I'm an attacking-minded manager. I like, I like football to be played the right way. I, I, want, I want our team to play out from the back, play into the thirds, um, and play nice, attractive football. So that would be my style. I'm all about the goals, really. Do you feel like you're achieving that this season at the moment? No. <laughs> In a word, no. Um, but we'll get there, definitely. We will 100% get there. This weekend was only your second league win so far this season. Yeah. Have, have you been a bit upset by that? Yeah, very disappointed. We, we had a good pre-season. We brought in seven or eight top players for, for this, sort of, this sort of level and we were really optimistic going into the season. Um, we, we picked up a couple of injuries during pre-season which, which has affected us, um, but it shouldn't have affected us as much as it has. So yeah, we're massively disappointed with, with only the two wins. Um, and there's plenty of work to be done, but we're confident we're going in the right direction. Talking about confidence and a special night for you a couple of weeks ago when you beat Salah Ash in the FA Vals on penalties. Yeah. Is that, is that still a good moment for you? Yeah, like, it was an amazing, amazing afternoon for, for us to, to see like, the joy amongst all the players afterwards and how much it meant to them. That, that, that's the reasons why we, we, we get into football and it was, it was just an amazing day for us and a great result for the club. And talking about the next round? Yep. Welton Rovers. Yeah. Uh, we were following weekend. Isn't it? Next weekend coming. Yeah. Couple hour journey. It's going to be a big day. It's a big day. We're, the lads are all looking forward to it. We've hired a coach for the day. Um, we've got we've got some meals made up for them to take up so, to try and make them feel a bit special. Um, and all we really know is that we're going up near Bath. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. We, we we'll try and find out a little bit about them and, and we'll go there and have a real go at them and look to get in the next round. Just a personal one for you. How's it been being the manager of this club? It's good, yeah. I mean, the, the highs are high and the lows are low, which every manager at every club will tell you. When, when it's going well, it, it's, it's the best thing in the world. And, and when you're having a, a little dark patch, it, it plays on your mind a lot. Um, but there have been more highs than lows. Um, and, and we've got a plan and, and we want to go places and, and, and that's the goal for us. And, and we're going to work towards that and we, we will achieve it. Did you know that Elberton Villa were formed in 1982? After the old team, Elberton Red Triangle, moved across from the adjacent rugby field down the road. And they've been here ever since. Did you know that Elberton Villa have already equalled their best ever FA Vars run? This weekend, hopefully they'll continue that against Welton Rovers. On a local level, in terms of news coverage, do you feel like you deserve a bit more? Possibly, um, but there isn't really that much out there, is there? Um, I mean, we, we get a fair bit on social media, on, on Twitter, um, but I mean, the local newspapers don't really want to know, know what's going on, and, and I'm not really sure anyone really buys the papers anymore, do they? So I'm not sure we miss out too much of that. What's the objective for you as a manager of this club? I want to win something. I'm desperate to win something. Um, we want to build a team that competes year in, year out. We want to bring young players through. Um, and for me, I'm just desperate to win something. Are there any managers at this level that you look up to? Yeah, of course. Um, there, there's some good managers around. I, I'm not, I'm not going to name them, but there are some good managers that have achieved good things at this level. So, of course, we look up to them and try and, and, try and see what they're doing and try and emulate them in some way and, and put our own twist on things. So, yeah, there definitely is, yeah. Who do you think are likely to win this league this season? <sighs> that is a very tricky question. I've said it many times before. This is a very, very competitive league. Um, Millbrook will be up there, Torpoint will be up there, um, and, and looking at results, Brixham, Newton Abbott, Ilfra Coombe, it's going to be, it's going to be tight. It, if I had to pick someone, if I had to pick someone, I'd probably say Torpoint. Um, they just seem to know how to win games. Um, so that would be my tip now. Wow, what a day it's been. Episode one is finally in the can. A huge thank you to Elberton Villa and Kev Bowden for today, and of course, Kev Hill and Exmouth Town. You're going to have us now for the next 10 months, so stay involved and love Devon football.